Well, let's still stay with the finance minister because it's revealed that Gapma will withdraw almost $1 billion from the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, to support the economy. Ghana's account with the IMF is set to be credited with almost $1 billion from the 23rd of August. Now, this is after the IMF board approved a record $650 billion to support member countries to fight COVID-19. There were initial reports that Ghana may not be able to withdraw the funds because of the, some debt obligations due to the IMF. However, Joy Business is learning that those debts have been cleared. Finance Minister Kenufereta has been outlining areas that the funds will be advanced to. I think it is clear in my mind the, the significance of the financial architecture if we are to make any progress of the transformation uh, that we had. Um, so the SEC uh, is important for capital markets because you are then beginning to look at uh, the real issue of infrastructure needs and long-term capital, uh, which has been the bane um, in this country for a while. Um, so we need to get creative about it. Uh, and in there, of course, is embedded the, um, the inauguration of um, um, the Development Bank of Ghana, which will, which will come you know, later. Um, so you look at the long-term issues um, of financing, and SEC is critical to that, to bridging that gap. Um, then, of course, you know, how do you garner or mobilize the revenue resources for that? Um, I'm, I'm extremely excited about the future because I think we are changing the landscape of the introduction of technology and the imposition of the uh, of the ID system um, to to um, to GRA, but that's not the end of it because we are now also going to be able to link um, um, individual activities at DVLA or even when you purchase a home or when you purchase um, uh, an airline ticket, um, so that we'll be getting. We'll be getting to a point where uh, we actually know where people's um, incomes are, and then they can contribute their fair share them to um, to nation building through effective tax systems. And then, of course, we have the Ghana.gov, uh, which also ensures um, that um, MMDAs um, would pay what they receive more directly into the state. As you realize, I think some 20 billion or so have already gone through that platform. So you can see a tightening and an improvement, um, which is very encouraging. As I mentioned, we are at about 13% um, revenue to GDP, our peers are about 20. So clearly, you know, we can have another half of those resources coming in, uh, and that gives us support for our economic it, it plan. You talked about plugging the loopholes, and yeah. it looks like uh, now everything is about revenue in terms of growth, in terms of deficit, in terms of uh, uh, debt stock and all the rest. Uh, how optimistic are you that with all these measures we'll start seeing the results very soon? Well, I mean, it used to be that the issue of compliance um, was one in which you say, well, I'm going to enforce with the old chassis. Now we have changed that. So instead of 5.5 million people, 10 numbers, you now have 15.5 million. Obviously, um, that would increase our capacity to get more revenue than before. You have um, Ghana.gov, which means that the leakages at the districts or, you know, uh, municipals um, will be reduced because monies are then paid directly uh, into a digital system. You know, so those things change the level of the platform. And then, as I mentioned, we formed a new group called RACE, uh, which is Revenue Assurance and Compliance uh, Enforcement. Uh, and that will look at the specific areas of leakages, uh, such as gold exports, um, petroleum bankering, warehousing, etc. So structural changes, which then mean our capacity uh, to, fu to, to, to fulfill what we had promised will happen. Speech, you talked about the fact that the, the cleanup uh, started yielding the results and also in your quest to make uh, a Ghana financial hub. Uh, from the data you see, you feel that the results, is, it's not clear for us that, listen, was worth doing this? I can't see why not. I mean, I, I think you can see it yourself with regards to 
um, the stability we have um, here, uh, where the currency is, um, where inflation is, and then the strength of the banks as uh, predating uh, 2017. Uh, but those are hard and courageous decisions that uh, the president encouraged us to do, and the Bank of Ghana has been very strong in enforcing that. Um, so I think the bad old days are gone. Uh, and we have a much more sanitized system uh, which will protect, you know, the clients in a good way and not waste the country's resources. You, you talked about the National Development Bank in your, in your, in your presentation, right? And all other things being equal, are we looking at somewhere in October that it, it will quickly start? I would imagine, up? I hope we can do it. We have um, um, now sent the final list of the board um, to the Bank of Ghana, so we hope to get approval. Uh, we have selected uh, the first um, CEO, um, so he will be 24-7 from now, and then uh, we expect, therefore, uh, for an efficient execution of that. When are we finally hoping that the government will take a decision on how to use the, 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 the special drain rights uh, from the fund? Um, I mean, the board um, approved of the fund, and on the 23rd of, um, of August, um, I think automatic um, disbursement to, to member countries of 100% um, of their quota uh, would be uh, will be affected, uh, and then we we would work on parameters such as um, immediate um, COVID-related needs, and also looking at our medium-term program um, to see areas that are important. Um, where the nexus between finance and health meet. Uh, it could be, uh, you know, housing, it could be, of course, employment, uh, which is key um, to us, uh, and a number of other areas such as digitalization uh, to make sure that it is used well um, and leverage um, to support, you know, uh, the Obatampa program.